Jay again with another video for my fellow believers. Woman, listen up. Men, this will probably be a review for most of you, but it's a serious topic, so you may want to pay attention. In this episode, I'm going to respond to a letter sent in by Abigail, a woman who needs clarification about our holy scripture. I have a lot of light to shed on the subject, so let's get right to it. Does God love women? I mean, really love women? I was raised to believe that Jesus loves women as much as men. But then I read a few verses from the Bible. One that got to me was 1 Timothy 2, 11 through 15. Gosh, Pastor Jay, if you read that, it sounds like women are meant to be second class citizens to men. And per the verse, what if it turns out I can't have children? Can I still be saved? I really thought that Jesus was all about the love, but it looks like he is all about keeping women down. With quotes like that, I wonder if he had mommy issues. What do you think, Pastor Jay? Yours in faith, Abigail. Okay, Abigail, to be honest with you, my initial reaction to the letter was to be very angry with you. I thought, how dare you question the word of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and make him out to be some abusive ex-boyfriend? That was my first thought. But then I remember that Jesus calls on us to help guide our fellow believers and to be forgiving of those who stumble. I'm not mad at you, Abigail. You're just acting how God made you. You see, God designed women with a slightly smaller brain than he gave men. You should go ahead and Google it. I'll post the link in the description. This means that women can sometimes have a hard time understanding the Holy Scripture at the same level as a man can. Well, just as God designed you this way, he did not leave you helpless. Since men have larger brains, we're here to lead you and to make sure you don't wander too far from the path of salvation. And praise Jesus, that's what I intend to do today. Let's start here. Before I can even delve into the scripture itself, let's talk about the flaws in your faith. You see, you were wrong right off the bat by even questioning the scripture. Not only that, but you questioned Jesus Christ himself. We are Christians and we do not question Christ. We just follow. You need to leave all the skepticism to the devil worshiping atheists and the scientists. That's what they do, Abigail. They just run around taking bits and pieces of information. They twist it all up and come up with wild theories about how dinosaurs died before humans existed or something crazy like that. We're not like them. We know the truth because we have the answers right here. The formula is simple. One, the Bible tells us that God is perfect. Two, the Bible tells us that God spoke his words in a scripture. Therefore, the Bible is perfect. Quit trying to come to your own conclusions based on flawed human intellect and reason. Now you said that a few verses troubled you, but you only named one. So let's deal with that. 1 Timothy 2, 11 through 15. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if it continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. See, it's no surprise that if you violate this piece of scripture, then your faith suffers. Abigail, Jesus doesn't hate women. He loves all of us. Why would he create something that he hates? He is just making clear what we already know. If we read Genesis and we understand the origins of men versus women. If God wanted women to be on the same level as men, he would have given the same level of personal effort in creating you. Men are commanded to lead women because it took a piece of a man to create you to begin with. Don't forget that, Abigail. God built women to play a completely different role than men. This isn't to say that God hates you or that you're second-class citizens. It's just like every successful company in the world. You have managers and executives that make the decisions and run the business, the men. Then you have support roles like housekeepers and secretaries, the women. The jobs of the woman in these companies are to listen to the guidance and leadership of the men and to take care of the little things so the men can focus on achieving the goals. Otherwise, men would have to greet customers and empty trash cans while running your company. I can't think of one successful manager that doesn't appreciate appreciate the vital roles of the support personnel. This corporate structure is directly modeled after the word of God. This proves that God doesn't think poorly of you or hate you. He gave you such an important job. And trust me, you would know if God hated you. Just ask the devil worshippers of Sodom and Gomorrah. Honestly, you're thinking only of yourself and of your feelings. If you look deeper into God's message from these verses, you'll answer your own question. God wants you to learn in silence because continuous chatter would make it impossible to study the Bible while also being there for your husband. God doesn't want you to have the authority to teach because we have all the authority and teaching that we need in the Bible. Plus, it gives you more free time to take care of the kids and stuff like that. And lastly, you need to remember that God tried to trust you girls once already, and you committed the most horrible sin against God, cursing humanity for the rest of time. You ate the apple after you were told not to. You have to admit, Abigail, you kind of fucked up there. That's exactly why God puts you through the pain of childbirth, so you don't forget your sin. Now, before I go, I want to touch up on one other point you brought up. You asked if you'd be able to be saved if you couldn't have children. You're just interpreting the scripture wrong 
again. See, you have it backwards. You're not able to have kids because you're not ready to be saved yet. Infertility is just another myth manufactured by those hell-worthy scientists. All women are fertile because God says that childbearing is their main purpose. Plain and simple. Why would God want you to bring another life into this world when he can't understand the role in your own life? If you ever find yourself unable to conceive a child, I would suggest that you do a lot of praying and a lot of Bible study. I promise you, Abigail, the minute that you humble yourself before God, God and stop being defiant, he will bless you with his final test. The pain of childbirth. It's then and only then that you'll be able to give your husband his own little boy that he can raise to a strong Christian man. I hope all that helped. Well, sheep, I hope this clears up the scripture for you. And I hope I can help Abigail get back on track so she doesn't stray too far from God's love. The biggest moral I want you to take away from this video is this. Questioning the scripture only clouds your judgment. If you just have 100% trust in the scripture that God left for us, you will not run into these lapses of faith. After all, what is there to question? These are the words of God himself, people. Abigail, I hope you understand that I'm not judging you and I'm not mad at you. We are all sinners, women especially. It's not my job to pass judgment on you or anyone. It's just my job to correct you from your path from time to time. I'm very grateful that you sent this question in because not only did it give me the opportunity to help you, it also gave me the opportunity to bring a greater understanding of the scripture to viewers across the world. Thanks for watching.